We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. These are the words of Winston Churchill, a noted journalist and then Prime Minister of Great Britain during World War II. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. And I would add, we make life holy by what we give. Well, this puts me in mind of a story. Now, I have told this story before, but it has such a special place in my heart. Uh, and it ties into this week's Torah portion so well that I just can't help wanting to share it with you once again. When I was in high school, my parents decided to buy a used, what is often referred to as an Airstream travel trailer. That symbol of American engineering, independence, and mobility. It was a beat up, brushed aluminum, aerodynamically, quote, styled box on wheels. And having spent most of its life parked in a secluded patch of ground in the backwoods somewhere in Texas for men to use while they were hunting or fishing. But it was serviceable. It just needed some refurbishing. Well, that's where my brothers and I came into the picture. Free labor. Mom drew up the plans and everyone in the family pitched in and according to what, whatever the skills they had. I did some basic carpentry and plumbing work. One brother provided some basic electrical work and everybody cleaned and painted. We rebuilt the front living dining area so that it included a full-size folding bed and dining table combination. And then we set out and rebuilt the back sitting and, and bedroom area, complete with new area rugs and afghans that I crocheted. Then we rebuilt the little kitchen area, replacing cabinets, the countertops, even all the curtains. I didn't make the curtains. Uh, for months, all of our extra time was spent on that Airstream. Finally, a fresh coat of paint threw out. And when we were finished, we had a charming, weather-tight dwelling that reflected my quirky family. It was warm and homey, and it was truly the fruit of our efforts. To this day, I never cease to be amazed at how much something made of metal and wood and cloth could be filled with the essence of the Kaplan family. From the moment you stepped into that Airstream, you experienced our family. We took great pride every time mom and dad took it out on one of their travel excursions. Well, believe it or not, there is a connection between our family's experience rebuilding that old Airstream trailer and this week's Torah portion, Terumah. You see, it is in this portion that God commands Moses and the Israelites to build a portable sanctuary, a dwelling place, for God's divine presence. The Torah states, the asuli mikdash v'shachan tibetocham. This is usually translated as, make for me a sanctuary so that I may dwell in their midst. The Israelites are commanded to do so by each bringing a gift, or truma, out of which the mikdash, the dwelling place for God, will be fashioned. The Israelites are instructed to bring a truma, an offering or gift of gold, silver, copper, special leathers, and other precious and semi-precious materials so that the sanctuary, the dwelling place for God, can be built. Well, when Rashi and other rabbis of old read this, they determined that the Torah was referring to two types of offerings or gifts. The first is what we call tzedakah. Those acts we are commanded to do that any righteous person should do to be a responsible member of society. That would be my brothers, my, me and my brothers. Being a responsible member of the family meant hands-on involvement in every phase of the refurbishing project. To be a righteous part of the family, there was never any hesitation. You threw yourself into the project. Then there are those gifts which are called truma, voluntary gifts which come not by command or instruction, but from the fullness of the heart. And that's the part when we give it that added effort to make it the best we could. It was the truma, the voluntary gift, that the Israelites brought in such abundance that Moses was forced to say, Dayenu, enough, we have all we need. Like that Airstream, everyone contributed according to their talents and possessions. Well, there came a time when Mom announced that we had completed our tasks and that the Airstream was ready as well. Now, I'm not trying to say that the Airstream became a mikdash, a dwelling place for God. But I am saying that the task of rebuilding our Airstream became the kind of project that really brought us together as a family. 
even though our best efforts were not always professional, <laughs> what we did, we wound up, it, what, but what we did do, wound up looking really good. But more than this, we took such pride in what we had crafted. That, I think, is the real message of this week's portion. As a family, we stepped up to build a place where the best of our efforts could dwell. You just felt it the moment you stepped into that special little space. So maybe we were creating a place for God to dwell in, as well as a place for our family. But I think we have a more pressing project to refurbish, refurbish. and I've spoken of it before, and I'm referring to the world around us. As daunting as this task is, there are small but significant ways in which we can help make our country and the world around us a better, a stronger, a more healthy, and a safer place to live. Each of us has our own unique gifts that we bring to this task, this sacred task. That's what this week's Torah portion is all about. In Jewish tradition, we call this refurbishing or rebuilding of the world around us as God's hands in the world as we participate in the ongoing works of creation. By joining our hands with others, it demonstrates that we can unite to make this country a place where God can dwell in our midst. Truth be told, God continues to, to dwell within us uh, as individuals and as society, even in the midst of a crisis. But when our lives become so overburdened that we lose hope, when we forget about the dream, then we lose the ability to recognize God's presence. We become emotionally numb and blind. So, my hope and my prayer for this Shabbat, the Asuli Mikdash v'shachanti b'tocham. May we join our hands together in making our country and the world around us a better place for even the least among us. Then America will prosper, and then surely we will know that God does in fact dwell in our midst. Shabbat Shalom. And good Shabbos. <laughs>